Welcome back. As our economy is still not growing strongly, still not creating jobs, strong criticism from the Centre for Development and Enterprise, who suggests government is actually following almost what it calls an anti-growth agenda. Also suggesting President Cyril Ramaphosa failed to implement his promises of structural reform to grow the economy or allow it to grow. Anne Bernstein is the Executive Director at the Centre for Development Enterprise. And good afternoon to you. Why are you so critical of government? What do you believe government has done wrong? Well, good afternoon, Stephen. Look, let's think about where we are. Uh, South Africa has almost no economic growth. We have a record high unemployment rate. We have crime rocketing. The best indicator of that is our murder statistics, which have gone up more than 60% or nearly 60% over the last decade. Our ports are probably some of the worst in the world. Our roads are falling apart. Everywhere you look, we can go on and on and on. Senior business leaders are shouting for them shouting in public that they can't get their goods to market. They can't get their goods to their supermarkets. So the country is in very, very dire straits. And you've got to ask why this has happened. Why is economic growth not possible at the moment? And in part, it's what we're saying after our analysis is that over the last 15 years or so, and there is no noticeable difference in the Ramaphosa administration. We've seen bad policy choices. We've seen very poor governance. And what we're seeing now is very poor leadership. So all of this has undermined stability in the country and most importantly, confidence in the future, which holds back investment. And that means we can't grow. Is it just, I mean, no one in government doing anything? Or are they all fighting each other to a standstill? Or is there just no actual understanding of how to fix the problem? We've thought long and hard about that. And I think in order to fix something, you need an accurate diagnosis, which means you have to be honest. And I don't think we've ever had from the president or anyone else in government, a really frank and convincing analysis of why are we in such a mess? So you have to start there. What is it? And it's a number of things. Now, corruption is one of those issues, but it's not just nine wasted years, which we blame on the Guptas that the president likes to do. We have to talk about cadre deployment to which this president says he is still committed. So what happens? You put people who are party loyalists in charge of big institutions with big infrastructure budgets. And those individuals, let's assume they are well-meaning individuals, have dual loyalties, loyalty to the party and loyalty to the institution where they have fiduciary responsibilities, an impossible situation. So our en enormous amounts of money have either been stolen or they have not been spent well. And in fact, our infrastructure as a society, our productive capacity is, is declining. It's disintegrating. Uh, so why are we in this situation? I think you have to start with the president told us right at the beginning of his administration that his loyalty to party unity was more important than fixing South Africa. And there are consequences to that. That's why we have a mediocre cabinet at best. That's why nobody in the cabinet or senior levels of government ever seems to be moved on or fired or whatever euphemism you want for not delivering. Now we have, to the president's credit, he established Operation Vullandlela, which is a mechanism to try and push some of his reforms. Great, but why don't you fire the people in the departments? Because Operation Vulanvela has no budget. They have to, they have to maneuver and, and persuade the, the ministries and departments to do what's required. And this is incredibly slow. So we have reduced our reform strategy to a list of reforms, most of which are positive, very slowly being implemented, 
And that's not a reform strategy. You know, Stephen, I interviewed Michael Spence last week. He's a Nobel Prize winner, former head of the Stanford Business School. And for this discussion, he was chairman of a really interesting commission on growth and development, where they looked at the 11 or 12 developing economies that had had sustained and really fast growth over a 20-year period. And what he said was, a list of reforms is not a growth strategy. You have to have a vision of where you're going. You have to have a team behind you that are committed to your reform strategy. You need deadlines. You need a program. And we have very little of that. And that's one of the reasons, among others, that we're not making progress. We have to face up to why South Africa is in such a terrible situation, not to allocate blame for the past, but in order to make the right decisions on how to move forward. Um, is the problem just a political problem? Is our politics so fractured, so difficult, so many different groups, so many different constituencies, that it may be difficult for anyone to govern? Or is the president just checking out? I think the president does often, in the last period, seem to be missing in action. But I do think there are some choices we have to make. We elect people to govern this country, and to govern is to choose, to choose the right people to, to fix our railways, to choose the right people to run Eskom, to choose the right people to run the police service. So what we have on nice speeches probably good intentions by top leadership in the government, but we never see the results. Words don't count anymore. So year after year, we're told we're going to get a special task team to look after corruption mafias or construction mafias or the people attacking trucks on the main arterial road for our economy from Durban to Johannesburg or Gauteng. But it never happens. You get the same speech the next year. So... It's who, who you appoint. It's what policies. Let me end with one big policy mistake. This belief in a developmental state led to a belief that we could have a monopoly generating electrical power for South Africa. Now, that worked for a period, but it hasn't worked for a long time. And the rest of the world in the main has moved on, understanding that if you have a number of competing firms producing power, you can bring the price down and you can deliver an, an abundance of energy. No, South Africa wants a developmental state and we have a monopoly on electricity generation so that when massive malfeasance, corruption, bad management takes place in that one institution, we now have put our society and our economy is in you know, on the verge of collapse if we don't have power. The same with the ports and with freight, rail freight and with commuter transport through Prasa. So Transnet, Prasa, these are monopolies. That is a deliberate choice, sort of a faith in the state when in fact the state is very weak. So there are a lot of policy decisions we've made. We say we want localization, but we also want to grow the economy and we end up forcing people, firms, energy, ESCOM, Transnet, to buy things that either aren't manufactured in South Africa, and it takes months and months and months to get the permission to buy it uh, somewhere else, um, or we insist they buy it here, and invariably it's for a higher cost and less quality. So we haven't prioritized and made choices that are absolutely vital if we're going to get growth. And we, we pretend we can do everything we want, and we have long laundry lists that contradict each other, and we have a real lack of leadership, which is what a country with our history and our divisions need. And it's not just one person, it's a team approach, but we're not getting that at all. So do you believe if the politics changed, there would be a change? I mean, South Africa is a difficult country to govern. Uh, you talk about the fact that we need leadership, perhaps more than other places, because of our history, because of our inequality and our racialized inequality in particular. So do you think that if there was a change at the top, if there was a change 
in government that could actually lead to real change? Well, Stephen, I run a non-party political organization. I obviously have private views about this. But, you know, there are lots of other countries that have had energy crises, but they fix them. It doesn't go on and on and on for decade after decade. So I am saying that if you were a Martian and you were looking at this country today, you would have to say whoever's in charge here is not doing a good job at all. It's time for different people at the top, different people in ministries. We need people who are committed to reform and who are actually held accountable for delivery. And if they don't deliver, then somebody else needs a chance. And Bernstein, thank you. Executive Director of the Centre for Development and Enterprises, you can hear a very strong view on the state of things at the moment. In other news, the Special Investigating Unit has welcomed a Johannesburg High Court ruling to disbar a 